for tuning in at the MedKit page. Uh, so we believe that private and personal health care is a big part of the solution right now to a lot of the problems we are experiencing in U.S. health care. So due to COVID, we have been interviewing private practices and hearing their very unique stories. And today we have Dr. David Dillon from Dillon Family Dentistry from Bryn Mawr, PA. Hey, David. How are you? I am doing slow. How are you? Fantastic. Awesome. So we're glad to have you on and we are very excited to hear from you today. So please tell us about your practice and what is your specialty and focus? Um, so I'd say if there was a specialty, um, I would say it's just kind of the customer service aspect of dentistry, um, uh, which seems to be kind of a cliche for a lot of people. My grandfather was actually um, credited with being the first guy in the Philadelphia area to dentist. Um, the kind of customer service they're doing now. So my father benefited from that, and then I benefited from uh, from everything you know, my father learned over his career and what he learned from his father. And uh, one of the biggest things was. Uh, it's really funny. It's one of the things that I keep hearing other people say in lectures. And I don't know if it was something my grandfather came up with originally, but he was the first one I ever saw anything that him saying it. He said, just figure every patient has the sign on them. and says, make me feel special. And that's pretty much what we do. We just kind of cater to each patient in the office, uh, which is easy because we usually just have one patient in the office at a time. Awesome. So what, I know you explained a little bit, but what makes you guys unique? Um, so we will cater the environment to whatever patient we have in the office. If we have an engineer in the office, we'll explain every little detail of how every little thing is going. If we have someone who's happy to just kind of talk and show pictures and everything else, we all just sit back and have a great time and go. Uh, an anxious person, you know, we can manipulate the music, we can slow things down, speed it up. Whatever that one patient wants, everybody in the office and everybody, everything in the office is catered to that one patient. Awesome. So what has been the most rewarding aspect of your job, but also the most challenging? Uh, most rewarding. So I would say it's, um, I would say for me, it's the victory of taking someone who's a, a dental phobic patient and having them within three visits just come in and be like, Jesus, why didn't I just come here my whole life? just sit down in the chair and just kind of talk about stuff and everything else. And they don't really even, it's just all behind them. And I think just kind of empowering them to let them know that they're in control is what it is most of the time. Uh, some people, um, some people you just have to show them that you can do it painlessly, but it's really not as much about pain as people want you to believe. It's about control. And it's really important to know for each patient exactly what their trigger is, because maybe for one person, their trigger is pain. So you need to go it another way. But if you're just getting them super duper numb, but you're not respecting the fact that their thing is control, it doesn't matter. You're not going to make them feel comfortable just because they're super duper numb. Yeah. And I'm sure the more often people come and address little things instead of waiting, you know, I'm sure it's a lot better for them down the road and they pay yeah. less and all that kind of stuff too, huh? Yeah. I was just talking, um, we just had our, uh, uh, a woman that I knew, of, I, I knew her, she and her husband 35 years ago uh, is now my Sonicare rep. And she, she and I were just in here talking and we were talking about how um, it's really important that uh, if people are limiting, especially older people, people are at high risk that might not want to go out into public um, too often. It's really important that they, uh, they do proper home care. They're doing like the best home care they've ever done in their life. Like everything they can do on a preventative end to, uh, to not have any kind of a dental emergency uh, and you know, always be able to do stuff on their timeline. Um, Diana, Diane brought up a really good point and it was uh, right now, since we seem to be between peaks, um, it's probably not a bad idea for people to come in right now. It seems like uh, things are gonna start getting crazier again in July and August and then get real crazy in the fall. So uh, I would say from now till the middle of July is probably a good idea for people to get out and do things that they're, you know, considering whether or not they want to do. Right. And, uh, and after that, it would be maybe like September and October. And then, man, who knows what's going to come in uh, November and December. 
Yeah, so since now we jumped onto the coronavirus train, tell us what happened, you know, when we first got, you know, the stay-at-home orders from Governor Wolf. Tell us what yep. that was like for your practice. So Wolf did a great job. He followed a straight scientific uh, protocol, and we're reaping the benefits of now Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and I think New York are the three states that are having decreases. Our neighbor Delaware is one of the worst states for uh, – for uh, increasing their cases. And I think they were kind of opening a little bit earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, so they shut us down, they mandated that we close. We had, I had already closed my office by the time they put the mandate out. I saw the writing on the wall. Um, and uh, so we were mandated to be closed for two months. I took care of a couple emergencies, a few emergencies, um, saw maybe one or two patients uh, a week. And then about a month ago, they, uh, they said, hey, you know, Pennsylvania's been doing pretty well. You can do, elective procedures uh, and uh, non-emergent procedures. You just shouldn't do anything that produces aerosol. So we started uh, doing cleanings again uh, uh, about a month ago, a week after they, they opened up those protocols and, uh, and, and just basic stuff. And I think probably in the next week or so, I think they'll open up, uh, I think we're actually opened up to do pretty much everything we wanna do now, including aerosol producing procedures, kind of like what you said before, where people can't let things go. Um, I think they really understand the risk of not being able to do preventive and not even preventive, but just taking care of small problems for people before they become big problems. So that's really nice that we're able to do that. Yeah. So tell us what it would be like as a patient, if we made an appointment and came into your office, what happens? What is your COVID response? I know you talked a little bit about it, but walk us through yeah. what you would do with the patient. So what we did is um, we tried to figure out, like uh, there was a, an article in the Business Insider that came out in the end of February, and it listed the 47 unhealthiest careers in the age of Corona. And dentists were mentioned seven out of those 47 and three of the top five. And most of it is because what I said before, how things get aerosolized up, that's a, that's a huge problem. So what we did is we went out and we got HEPA filters. This is our HEPA filter. Oh, um, awesome. this, this filter will uh, scrub the air in this room. I'm fortunate that we have uh, doors. We can close off all the rooms in our uh, offices. So that machine, when I turn it on full blast, it will scrub the air in here 99.97% clean in just seven minutes. Um, so we have one in this room, one in the other room that we're using, and one out in the hallway. So, um, so what we do is we minimize our patient's time in the office. We tell them to stay in their car until their appointment time on the dot. We let them in at 1030, at 11 o'clock, at 1115, whatever their time is. They can come into the office then. They come straight back. They wash their hands. Um, and uh, they rinse with peroxide. They sit down and uh, we do the work. We leave the room. We don't touch anything. We just put the, the HEPA filter on and uh, they, uh, they pay Joanne, my, uh, my, recep my receptionist, my office manager. I asked her, you know, uh, what does she want? She want a plastic shield? She want to just wear a mask and all? So she's now in a, in a fishbowl. We gave her a giant plastic awesome. shield. That was my uh, arts and crafts project for uh, March. So she's back there in a self-contained area. So people spend uh, just a tiny bit of time there paying and setting up their next appointment. Um, and then when they leave, pretty much just about every doorknob is scrubbed down. And then once we have the air clean, it's just the same stuff that we've been doing to keep everybody from getting hepatitis, tuberculosis, and HIV. We just wipe down all the contact surfaces in the office. Right. So. Um, so there's a little bit less chitty chat. Like for the patients, they'll know maybe they're, they'll notice maybe a little bit less chitty chat. No one waits in the reception room. Uh, right. If if one family comes, if we have three or four people in one family, sure we'll put them out there, and then we wipe it down, turn the filter on, and uh, make sure everything's clean. So I would say we probably have the closest to a sterile environment that anyone could visit in any public space. So we took what was, you know. Uh, the unhealthiest at the World Economic Forum in Davos last year, they identified dentistry as the unhealthiest profession in the world. And a lot of it is because of the aerosols. So we took the unhealthiest environment and we've made it the cleanest, safest, 
probably most sterile environment anybody could visit other than their home. That's amazing. And I love how you took yourself around so the people that are watching can actually see when they go into your office, like you see the shield. And it's, it's nice to know that because a lot of people still aren't up to date about what their healthcare providers are offering or what they're doing. And it's so great that you're able to really show people and that's how we're doing this. We want the public to know what great work you're all doing to make things safe for people for when they come back for their treatment. So that's amazing. So my next question is, I know that you're pretty active on social media for your business. How has that been in favor to you um, during COVID? Well, um, the, uh, the physical world, the real world is, you know, virtually non-existent. It's existent. It's, it exists virtually. So, um, so having virtual presence, having a uh, online presence and stuff is uh, really good. So we put out a lot of uh, PSAs. Uh, I put out a PSA out on Lower um, Marine Community Network or Mainline Parent Network. Um, one of them just saying, hey, look at, you know, right now is the time to, to do the best home care you've ever done in your life and the most preventative stuff you know, you might not want to get out and about and on, let's try to keep you from having problems and just talk really quickly about some of the basics of doing that. Um, it uh, allowed me to uh, put stuff out there that uh, our patients can reference. So we send emails out to our patients and send them links to some things that we have on our social media and our Facebook page and all. And it also, it's a information portal for uh, people, you know, if, if, uh, you know, if my parents were alive and they were, you know, um, compromised and had health uh, risks, I would want them to visit my office more than any other dentist office. There's very few things uh, that have happened in dentistry. Most of the stuff, I think one of, uh, most of the stuff that's happened in dentistry is kind of like what's happened to all the mom and pop shops, kind of just like what your intro was saying. And that's what's happening with me and my practice throughout my career. I've been practicing for 31 years. Every change that's happened in society in insurance companies and in dentistry pretty much favors the large group practices and all. It's the most profitable way to practice and that's why everyone's kind of moving that way. Um, this is the first time anything has painted us more favorably. And it's a pretty big pain. It's a pretty big pain. You know, um, the, what we can offer now is, um, is pretty amazing. I was talking with a friend of mine two weeks ago and she works in a open group practice where there's not physical walls between all the different operatories and there aren't doors. And she's like, I don't know what we can do. I don't know if we can do it all with plastic. So I feel, I feel bad for them because I don't know how they're going to scramble and do it. And even if you have multiple patients in the office at a time, you're not going to be offering a clean or sterile environment. It's impossible. No, you're right. And I'm, I'm so glad that you're telling everyone all this because what you're doing is, extremely important and the way you're treating your patients and you're you know talking in community groups about what people can do you're just serving your entire community and i know you're really big into rotary you've been a member for almost 30 years so thank you for that and we just we really enjoyed having you today and before we leave please tell us how um, people can get in touch with you or your practice great so our phone number is 610-525 five four nine seven uh the office is kind of closed for the next couple of weeks i was supposed to be on vacation but i got stopped at the border of latvia so my whole family is over there for the summer but uh on my business card and on my website and everything i give out my cell number my cell is 484-222-1247 if anyone's having a problem or even if they just have a question i'm more than happy i'm the kind of person that answers their phone or gets back to texts very quickly uh, on Facebook, we're Dillon Family Dentistry, and uh, that's our uh, uh, email address as well, brimardentalcare.com or dillonfamilydentistry.com. Well, David, you are the best. Thanks so much for hanging out today and talking to us about your unique story during COVID, and we appreciate it. Great, Rachel. My pleasure. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thanks, and have a great day. See ya. Cheers.